G'day guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now today, I thought I would take predictions to the next level. I'm going to tip every game of the 2023 AFL season to get a definitive ladder predictions. Normally I do my ladder predictions and it's just off the cuff. It's just from the top of my head. I just make it up on the spot. So let's leave no stone unturned on tipping the entire 2023 AFL season. Let's work out what my final ladder is. All right, the Blues win in that first game. The Cats get off to a great start. I reckon North beat West Coast round one. The Lions beat the Power. I reckon the Ds beat the Dogs. I reckon the Suns beat the Swans. Adelaide beat GWS. GWS, I'm predicting, is going to be a long, long way down. The Hawks will beat the Bombers. Bulldogs and the Lions. That's a cracking game. Lions will get it done. Jeez, Freo and the Cats are off to a flyer here. Round eight and the Blues are on top of the minute. I don't have GWS with a win up into round 15. <laughs> Far out. Wow. So there we go. Jeez. Well, there's a bit to dissect here, isn't there? The Lions. Phenomenal season. You know, I think kicking the Ds out of the finals last year, it was their grand final last year. They had celebrated like they had won it all. It's a bit of a drive-by. But, um, <laughs> but I think that was a bit of a turning point for them. Obviously, they weren't good enough to beat the all-conquering Geelong Football Club. And not many teams were. They were an outstanding team in 2022. But I feel like... That, that Lions win will propel them, momentum-wise, for a big season in 2023. I have the Lions finishing on top. They're only dropping four games. Because of the extra round, they've won 19 games. That is a phenomenal season. That is, yeah, unbelievable to go through a year and, and pinch 19 wins. So that's a very dominant year for the Brisbane Lions. I have Geelong finishing second. Now, people probably won't be surprised, but when I did my season predictions, which comes out next week, I didn't have the Cats in the top four because there's always four sexier teams that you think should make the top four. It's always the Lions, the Tigers, the Blues this year, the Ds, the Swans, the Dockers. There's always that four to six teams that you always go, geez, I think they'll make the leap. And I always count out the Cats and they prove me wrong every year. So I don't have them in my top four in my season predictions. But going through and tipping every game, they bank so many games at GMHBA. When you actually compare them to their fixture, they win, obviously, more games than they lose. They've won 18 games in my prediction. So, unbelievably, the Cats just keep on keeping on and have finished second. Now, I've had some people tell me that the Ds won't make the four recently, and it's 
sort of rattled me a little bit because I thought the D's making the four was a bit of a foregone conclusion. I know that we gassed out towards the end of last season. We sort of had a two-year campaign. It started at the start of 2021 and essentially the boys were just all football between 2021 all the way through to getting knocked out in straight sets at the end of 2022. They didn't really have time to refresh after the season. You saw what sort of a toll it took on the Western Bulldogs um, after going through that whole year of 2021. Um, they obviously didn't bounce back as well as they probably should have in 2022. So the D's gassed out. In every game that we lost, we're up by five goals, usually in the third term. We probably should have manhandled a couple of those games that we squandered. I just think we've still got a gear to go to. We played some bang average footy last year. I thought we should have won every game we were in. <laughs> so I've got the D's finishing third. There's some teams that we just can't beat. I've got us losing to the Pies. We always seem to lose to the Pies. We always seem to lose to Geelong. I've got us losing to Geelong. And then I can't remember who else I tip to beat the D's, but there was a couple of middle of the road teams that sort of knock us off as well. If the D's can finish third again, I'll be proud. I just want to witness a sustained, successful football team. If we can finish top four three years in a row, now that's a big tick for me. The Blues have a very tasty fixture, so I've got them sliding up into the four, but look at the percentage between them and the Tigers. It's 2%. It's actually nothing. Like, when you do the predictions, you just whack in a random margin, so I wouldn't really be massive on that. Look at the teams below them. So, I've got Carlton finishing fourth, but the Swans and the Dockers are a game and the same percentage, so that is going to be tight. That is going to be super, super tight this season, that race for the top four. It always is tight. Yeah, look, between the Ds and the Swans, there's not much of a gap. So obviously the Tigers, the Dockers, the Swans consolidate after a, a pretty good year in 2022. The Pies sneak into the eight. I didn't really think that they would sneak into the eight. I felt like, you know, potentially they might miss this year. But when I did the predictions, they banked the wins, the Pies, which is really exciting. They've obviously pipped the power here by not that much percentage. The power, I th were tipping against early when I was doing this, but they started to collect wins towards the back end of the season. So get excited for a big power surge late in the year. The Hawks, I don't know. I'm pretty bullish on the Hawks. They were banking wins left, right, and center. So the Hawks, I think, could finish higher than what people think. Will the Hawks finish higher than the Suns this year? I know the Suns are meant to make that next leap, but I just had the Hawks banking wins and playing some good footy. Let's hop down to the bottom of the ladder. I didn't think North would finish last again. It's very rare that teams win like three or four wooden spoons in and amongst similar seasons. So I think they'll do better than two wins like that would be catastrophic if they won just two games but obviously when you you're going off the tipping which is pretty much the favorites from last year you're going to get a similar result for a team like north melbourne gws i reckon are the slider i reckon they're the team that really drop off this season i think i had them 0 17 or 0 18 when i was doing the tipping and i thought jesus i probably should give them a couple of wins the crows people are expecting to slide again i don't know what to read for the crows i think the crows will have a better year than west coast but i'm not expecting huge things from the Adelaide Football Club. West Coast, I think, will just be bottom four again. You know, maybe not last, last, but there's nothing that really excites me on their list. They're very, very old. They've really aged in the last couple of years. 2018 was five years ago. So every player that was 27, 28, in their prime back then who won the flag they're now in their 30s yeah i just don't see the west coast eagles firing essendon i think it's another sort of patient year for them i said this a couple of years ago i said they'll get worse before they get better everyone jumped on me obviously because i tipped them for the spoon and they finished in the top eight but i just thought with that young crop coming through that they would get worse before they got better and they sort of are and that's okay i think they're just doing a little bit of a regroup brad scott's first year no expectations i think they'll win a couple of good games but i think they'll lose more than they win unfortunately the Sane is under Ross. I think he's going to really shake that football club up and they're going to have another sort of regroup year. It's not a rebuild for the Saints, but it, it is a bit of a shake up again. The Western Bulldogs, the Saints and the Power for me are just in no man's lands. Like, you know, they're the sort of teams that have lived in the middle of the ladder for a long, long time. And, you know, I've supported the Ds who have done that for a long, long time. The Blues have done that for a long, long time. They lived in the middle of the, um, the ladder and haven't quite gone anywhere. So it's either up or down for these teams. They've got to make a decision what they're doing is the Bulldogs going really young with their with their key position players you know your Sam Darcy Jamara Ugalhagen bloody what's his name Bussinger are they going to go really young with their keys and sort of just you know bring a bit of youth in drop off for a couple of years and bounce back or are they still trying to pinch it with this same crop and then the Gold Coast Suns obviously a bit of improvement but I don't think that's enough improvement I think finishing 11th for the Suns is a bit of a fail. They have to start making that top 
you know, eight, nine-ish sort of ladder positions. I don't think finishing 11th is a pass mark for the Gold Coast Suns this season. All right, guys, that is my ladder predictions. Obviously, I went through and tipped pretty much the favorites from last season. I'm a complete nuffy who knows very little about the sport unfortunately so i'd like to know your opinions i want to be informed i want to be educated whack down your opinions in the comments i'll be sure to comment and reply to most of them because i want some knowledge going into this football season let me know if i've put some teams too high let me know if i've put some teams too low i'd love to have a bit of a yarn with you guys in the comments down below once again guys i really appreciate the support i appreciate everyone tuning in and i'll see you for some more content very very soon cheers guys